Alrighty, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to the Daily Wrap for what was Saturday, the 27th of January, 2024. And here's the deal. Although today, I feel, was a really good streaming day when it came to the quality of the games I played and the like, uh, I think it's going to begin a discussion about things that we need to talk about when it comes to the content that I put out on this channel. And what I mean by that is, as I've already stated many, many times this year, <clears throat> I think there are way too many RPGs that are coming out that are essentially too long and what's happening is <clears throat> this channel is becoming a hard channel to have a balance on anymore let's talk about that a little bit tonight because first let's talk about what happened today let's talk about tomorrow's streams and then I'm going to tell you my opinion and we're going to definitely talk about this on tomorrow's podcast okay so today on the level one podcast I basically opened up talking about the two games that are the new releases for the week, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, and Tekken 8, giving my opinions on each. And I had a segment where I got incredibly animated and emotional and upset because people on the internet tend to think that because, oh, a lot of people make fun of him and, and you know, call him a lol cow or whatever, that apparently I don't have the right to state facts, okay? For example, me playing Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth and getting through the first three hours, I found tons of parallels in the story of Ichiban Kasuga and my own life. I mean, the whole beginning of the game's story is that he is harassed online by a bunch of people making up conspiracies about him that are not true and don't have concrete proof of, but they still push them forward as truth for personal gain on the internet. That's literally my life story. Like, literally, that's what happens to me on a daily basis. So when I say that, I mean it. It's not a joke. It's not... And if you... Oh, it's a meme that... Oh, yeah, I'm just like... Him. No, there's no meme. There's no meme. You're an idiot. All right? It's truthful. I have to go through this stress every day hearing that people are saying and doing shit about me. I have no idea what it is. I just ignore it, but it's all over the internet every day. These scumbags who just besmirch me and my reputation and my and anything to do with me uh, turn every positive into a negative, just like they're doing to Kasuga in this game, right? So, <clears throat> basically... Um, I see that parallel, and I have the right to talk about that publicly and say I see it as a parallel and be taken seriously. And if people don't want to take me seriously, I don't care about those people. They're scum, all right? So basically, I talked about that on the podcast this morning, but also talked honestly about my thoughts about each of those games having played them on launch day on Friday. Um, that was really all we had really time for. And then we went into the first stream today, which was Tekken 8's narrative-based story mode called The Dark Arisen or The Dark Awakens. It's called The Dark Awakens, something like that. The Darkness Awakens? No, it's The Dark... I don't even know. But <laughs> but basically, you guys voted overnight for what you wanted to see on the first stream, <clears throat> whether it was Arcade Quest. That's the mode with the simulated arcade where you can pick any character you want and basically practice with them and learn while leveling up, doing kind of this story, but getting in-game currency to unlock customizables and things for your characters. It basically serves like tons of purposes all at once. But you guys said you wanted to see the story first, which is fine because the story is short. It's only around three and a half hours long. So I actually started gameplay a little early today, and we got it done. We, in one sitting, got through the story mode. It was fun. Now, was it the best story mode ever? No, but it was actually much better than Mortal Kombat 1 story mode, in my opinion. Uh, there was some frustration in there, but at the same time, it was a good time. I got to play with a variety of characters. Of anything, I think the one character I learned a bit about was Jin, because Jin gets used a ton in the story mode. So I, I learned a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but after finishing it, I thought it was decent. Now... The audience thought that too, but let's be honest, when I'm playing fighting games, people want to see me do competitive play. That's the point. That's what gets people excited for them. You know, same thing with Street Fighter VI. Whenever I tried to play the offline story mode, man, people didn't like it. But as soon as I started playing with other characters online, or like people liked it, right? So that's kind of what I'm expecting is going to happen with Tekken. So was it a, a hugely, massively supported stream of Tekken? No. But was it okay? Yeah. For what it was, for a one-off stream, knowing that I wanted to see the story. Now I understand the plots between, like, Reyna. I know who she is now. We know a little bit more about June Kazama and why she might be in the game. It makes a lot more sense. I'm happy I did it. And people who were there liked it, including me. So I'm happy for that. Check it out. If you're interested in the story of Tekken 3, it's three part. excuse me, Tekken 8, three parts, uh, about three and a half hours of gameplay today, okay? Tonight's late stream was the continuation of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. And the good news is, after around two and a half hours... We're at the end of the intro. We're finally going to go to Hawaii, okay? Which is the whole point of the game. 
The bad news is it took five and a half hours to get there, and I can already tell you that the vast majority of the audience is turned off to this game. They put way too much narrative up front, almost zero gameplay. Like, of the five and a half hours I've played, I've only done combat maybe 30 minutes. Everything else is sitting in a cutscene. So, people are bored. I can't blame you. Like, unless you're really heavily invested in this game, you're probably bored. It was a really bad way to pace the opening. Um, you know, it's funny because I know people for a fact are like, gee, I wonder if Like a Dragon, is it going to be good? Let me watch Phil play the game. And they started watching. They're like, oh, they just got bored. And like, oh, crap, I don't want to get this now. That's, that, that's not good. And the thing is, the game very well could be amazing, but it's all about first impressions. And a lot of people now have a bad first impression of this game because the opening was too slow. I even said it tonight at the end of my stream. I said, <clears throat> I feel what they should have done was it's a narrative device called In Medias Res. What this narrative device means is that you start a story in the middle. So imagine if Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth started in Hawaii. And you're in Hawaii and you're going around and there's all these different things from the main game from the last time. Different cultural things, different kind of combat style. Let's say you played in Hawaii for three hours and it was like an intro to the characters and a dungeon and all of that. And then all of a sudden when you get to the end, well how did we get here? Ah, now let's flash back to the beginning. And imagine there was a five hour chunk of the game now going back and explaining all the backstory. Well, at least you got three hours of awesome, quirky, fun gameplay first before you got to this heavy handed narrative. That would have been so much better and it probably would have hooked people. Instead, you got people falling asleep. I can't blame you. Again, I really can't. I, this is valid criticism of the game that pacing's terrible. They should have done it that way and because of that, it's hard to retain an audience. Now, the thing is, you're now compounding that with the fact that over the last year, I have played an insane amount of lengthy RPGs, right? I mean, you had Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. You had Final Fantasy 16. I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3, right, for a very lengthy period of time, over a month, 60 hours. We had Alan Wake 2 that was a really lengthy game last year. So all these lengthy games, even Sea of Stars recently that were 16 hours in, and we put on hiatus, and now we're starting another lengthy RPG. Oh, by the way, there's that Grand Blue game, there's the Persona 3 remake, there's Final Fantasy 7. It's like, what is going on? Why is the entire games industry releasing the same type of too long game? It exhausts the audience. There used to be balance. It used to be, there'd be an action game, there'd be a platformer, there'd be this, there'd be that. Now it's just, there's a million RPGs. Like, every fucking company is making an RPG now. I don't get it. As a fan of RPGs, even I know this is too much. And I'm curious what to do at this point. Because, let me tell you, after tonight's Like a Dragon stream, there was one super chat and like three tips, all right? Not today, I didn't hit a single tip skull. I barely made any income on both streams today combined, all right? This comes at a time when I told you guys this month is really bad for me because of the trolling, giving all of those unpaid memberships out for free. I am down a ton of revenue this month that I should have earned because people got free memberships and they would have renewed their memberships or become members or gifted legit memberships and none of that is happening. I mean, I have a month, new releases, not a single legit gifted membership. I take that back. There's like three gifted memberships in the last two days for new releases. Typically, that's the time when people come by and gift a ton of memberships to help the community, and no one's doing it because of this. So I'm already behind, and now I'm having a slow weekend. That's awful, all right? Now, who's to blame? The trolls, 100%. Fucked up that they have that much power. I can't fix that, all right? That's a YouTube thing to fix. And... The game selection. Because last night when I played Tekken, it went really well, you know? But I know I can't just play multiplayer constantly with Tekken. I have to have time to play the other modes to even learn the characters. So and there has to be a balance here at some point. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know what to do about a lot Like a Dragon. I like the game and I want to play it. And now it's starting to get to the, the, the Hawaiian portion. I don't think we're going to see any more attendees than we saw tonight. Tonight, I think we had around 300 and almost no support. I think that's going to be par for the course for the whole playthrough. So that means I can't have it be a major stream all the time or very often at all, right? I have to make judgments based on what people want, what people will support, and what's going to pay bills because this is my job as well as my hobby. So after tonight, we got some serious questions to ask about what games I play moving forward because I'm going to be honest with you. I think I need to stop playing RPGs. Just real talk. There's too many of them. They're too lengthy. And the audience doesn't come out for them. I need to play games that are actually going to support the business. 
and not that every RPG I play is a downtime game and no one cares about it. Only me and a small group, but sadly, it's not a group that's going to keep ponying up every time I play it. It's not getting that mainstream appeal. There's too much of it. It's worn out at this point. I can't believe there's people who are arguing with me. Oh, you should totally be playing Sea of Stars, Baldur's Gate 3, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, Persona 3 Remake, the Grand Blue game, and Final Fantasy 7 all in one month. There's people saying that. Like, are you insane? <laughs> it's out of, you're out of control. There's too much of the same, you know? I, I hear it. I, you know, again, I feel like this is just... There was not a good time to play Baldur's Gate 3. There just wasn't. I played it a ton over December and January, and I'm 60 hours in, and we're, what, a third into the game? Like, what the fuck? Why are these games so long, right? So, here's the deal. I enjoyed today. I liked the narrative story mode of Tekken. I had a good time with it. I really enjoyed tonight's stream of Like a Dragon. I'm glad we're finally hitting up Hawaii. I loved interacting with everyone all day long, but I can't have days like this every day. I can't. It was one of the slowest days I've seen in ages. You know, days when I was just playing Baldur's Gate in a random game at night, we're doing better than two new releases today. That's atrocious. I just dropped hundreds of dollars on these games. You know, geez. So, I think we need to talk about it. We need to figure out what's a way to go about this moving forward, all right? Because here's the thing. Like, this week is kind of set in stone. I'm already doing another major stream of Like a Dragon on Monday, and that's fine. We're going to get to Hawaii and everything, but... We're in a situation now where it's like, I know this game, sadly, is just not going to bring butts to seats, as they say. And I think that it has to end up being night streams, which sucks because we're never going to make progress in it. It's a super long game, you know. Uh, it might have to be balanced on night streams for, like, months. I, I don't even know what else to say. People are just burnt out on this stuff. Um, and that least begs the question, what to do for daytime streams, right? I guess Baldur's Gate 3 will probably come back as a daytime stream over the course of this month because that's what people were actually engaging and supporting with um i guess we'll see but here's what's coming up tomorrow here's the good news all right the react show is fine we actually have enough submissions for the react show to do dsp versus the internet no problem so the whole crisis of oh god all the gifted memberships we're going to throw it off has been averted between the ultra members and enough people who have upgraded to the submissions level we have enough subscri uh, submissions and i'm going to make that playlist literally right now when i'm done recording uh, for tomorrow's show, and I'm happy to do it. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with for the React show tomorrow. Okay, so podcast in the morning where we'll tackle, tackle this issue, DSP versus the internet, and then tomorrow night, Tekken 8 multiplayer. And again, I'm going to be focusing on Paul and King again, reason being, I haven't even touched another character besides just dabbling in Jin, but haven't really even practiced combos or anything, so I can't play with him online yet. So it's got to be those two. Um, and I will look at some videos. Like, I did notice... Uh, a couple videos showing off some of the combos that King can do, and I think I'm going to try to learn those and try to implement those in the gameplay. Um, and it should be a good time, all right? And then Monday, the major stream will be Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth finally hitting up Hawaii, and then Monday night is going to be Pal World, which is a game that has worked. The two times that I've played it, you guys have enjoyed it and, and showed up and engaged and supported it. I'm excited to, to continue with that. It almost feels like Minecraft again to me from when I played it many years ago. Um, so that'll be Monday night, and then Tuesday is going to be Tekken in the, in the daytime, likely Arcade Quest mode, where we'll use that mode to try various new characters and learn them, so I can apply them to multiplayer moving forward. Um, and then probably uh, that night is going to be... Well, here's the thing. Originally, I was going to make that night Baldur's Gate 3, but I'm almost thinking maybe we should do a whole Tekken day where we do like 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 Arcade mode in the, or in the day and then a, a multiplayer stream at night, and then maybe Wednesday, it can be Baldur's Gate 3 during the day to have a day stream of it to end the week, and then like a dragon at night. I'm almost leaning that way now because, you know, everything's kind of thrown for a loop. Originally, I was going to play a ton of like a dragon, but two streams in, it's already dead. I mean, what? it's crazy. So, got, let's talk about all of this in the morning. I'm not going to come to a solution just talking about it by myself here in the Daily Wrap, but something's got to give at this point. There's too many RPGs. There's too much of the same. Um, going on and still coming up and I can't just keep doing that it's not going to work especially now things are down because of these idiots and I need to be getting the opposite happening and it's not how is it that I'm two days into new releases and things are slower than it was when I was playing the older stuff for filler in January it's crazy right so we got to do something about it and figure it out all right anyway <clears throat> I am looking forward to a podcast talking with you about this in the morning 
I'm looking forward to the React Show and more multiplayer of Tekken 8 tomorrow. So I hope to see you then. All right, everyone. Please have a good night. Enjoy the content. Enjoy the story of Tekken 8. Enjoy the new narrative here tonight in Like a Dragon. And I'll see you in the morning when we'll discuss, you know, how to tackle these changes in the future. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Peace out.